Grand Puff. One winter's night as the cold winds blew gently yet barely across the island of Sodor. The engines found it hard to sleep. What we need, suggested Toby, is to listen to a story. Yes, said Percy the small engine, a mysterious story. But, added Thomas, it must have a happy ending. Tom t Driver told me a story. Percy and Toby were as excited as the others, so they listened in very closely. Once upon a time, began Thomas, there were three little engines who lived in their own little shed and worked on their own little railway. Their names were Duke, Stuart, and Falcon. Duke was the oldest, being the brown saddled tender tank engine, and was named after his grace, the Duke of Sodor. He was proud of this, and loved to keep the little engines in order. Whenever their younger engines would do anything that Duke thought wrong or improper, Duke would often say, That would never suit his grace. Other engines came and went as necessary, but Duke would outlast them all. Steward of Balkan used to call him, Grand call him Grandpuff, and soon got the engine, the other engines to call him that too. They were fond of Duke because he was so wise and kind, but they will often get tired of hearing all about his grace. Sometimes they would tease him for being in a windbag while winking and chatting, and chanting the following: "Engines come and engines go, Grandpa goes on forever." You impenitent scallywags, scolded Duke one morning, having lost patience. Whatever are you young engines coming in nowadays? Never mind, Grandpa, retorted Stuart. We're only young ones, added Falcon firmly. Well, you better, better mind, unless you want to end up like Smudger. Ooh, Grandpa, whatever happened, cried the young engines in worry. Smudger, began Duke, was a show-off. He rode roughly and often came off the rails, on purpose. I warned him to be careful, but he took no notice. Listen, Dookie, he snarled. Who worries about a few spills? We do here, I said. But Smudger just laughed. Hey! <laughs> Until one day, manager said he was going to make him useful at last. Smudger stopped laughing then. Why? What do you do? Asked Stuart Falcon and Alarm together. He turned him into a pumping engine called a generator. Duke pressed on. If you have a look, he's still out there behind our sheds here at Alstale. He'll never move again. Afterward, Stuart and Falcon became really useful engines, and all of them were happy together for many years. Hard times came. The mines and the hills closed, and the railway was closed too. People came to buy the engines. We'll take Stuart and Falcon, they said. No one wanted to buy Duke, however. They thought him too old to be really useful. Cheer up, Grandpa, called Stuart. We'll find you a nice railway, and then you could come and keep us in order, us all in order again. You be careful, young ones, replied Duke. Stuart and Falcon tried to be brave and laugh as they prepared to face the outside world, but none of them thought their dreams would come true. Before backing him into his own shed, Duke's driver and fireman oiled and greased him up one last time. After they dropped his fire, they sheeted and surrounded him comfortably and said goodbye, before closing and locking the doors to the shed. Then they had to go away and find work. Duke was alone. Go well. He sighed to himself. I'll go to sleep. 
that will help to pass the time. Time passed. Winter tar and swash soil from the hills. Trees and bushes grew all around the areas where the original railway was. You would have known the shed or multiple sheds were there, let alone the little engines sleep and sleeping inside. That's not a happy ending, cried Percy. How did he just... Don't worry, Percy, soothed Thomas. There will be a happy ending, but it will have to wait until next time.